turn it on. record. That's Steve Earle. I love that. That's called Satellite Radio. Uh, good morning, Gerald McAll Anderson here, the number to ring you for to contact this program. And of course, we welcome all calls, and our steady staff is waiting here to hear what you have to say. The number to ring is 08459 Do I sound particularly false today? Um, I'm working at it. Yes. No, because um, I've discovered that everybody else is false, and everybody's doing okay, and I get nothing but abuse. So I may as well just be like everybody else. Hello, the, the other man at half ten that you were talking to didn't seem to want to talk to you. No, he wasn't himself today. No, Janet said that too as well. And I noticed that too. I know he's not himself, so I don't try and... I no, try but you yeah. were... Uh, he didn't want to talk to you. No, you see, but I know what he's like. He's driven by all kinds of strange demons, and uh, sometimes he's not happy. You see, maybe sometimes at the end of the programme, he's not happy with the way the programme is going. Well, let's not talk about he's it. He's a perfectionist, and yeah. sometimes he doesn't talk because he's not happy, whereas I don't care one way or the other. But I'm going to try and be nice to people. How are you today, Sean? No, I, think, I, I don't know. I'm all right. I'm you all okay? Right. I'm all right. There was, there was night on telly last night. Was there not? No. I didn't look myself. No, I didn't. How's Janet? Janet looks particularly pretty today. Yes. I hope she's fine. Is she okay? Oh. Have you going all right? Yes, I was. Have, have you people in there got all you need? Is everything all right? Yeah. Can, is it, can I help you in any way? 
I don't want to be a bit of a strain on you. Do you mind if I give the phone number? You don't mind if people ring up, do you? I know you're very tired. 08459-555-678. This is the new me. It's a hit for you. <laughs> this is what everybody else is like. Everybody else is nice and healthy. Janice says you look well. Thank you. Uh, Why wouldn't I look well? I've just spent three weeks in the sun doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever noticed that no matter where you go from Northern Ireland, you, ah. always, you always come back, you always look better? Now, for instance, do you ever notice that? Now, if I said to you today, I guarantee this, if I said to you today, I'm going to uh, the Arctic Circle for two weeks. If I went to the Arctic Circle and came back, I would look better. Because everybody always looks better when they go somewhere else and come back here. But this is not the case. I mean, if I live in New York or somewhere like that, and I go, I go home to Ireland, I don't look better when I come back. I look worse. So everybody who goes away improves. And then when they come back, they start to deteriorate again. Why is that? Groundhogville. That's what we call it. Groundhogville. Here, listen. The number to ring is 08459 555 well, I try that again. I, I had a little stumble there. I'm sorry. 08459-555-678. If you have any problems at all, or if it can help you in any way, maybe perhaps you could use the email. It's jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. You're making a noise there with your pen. I, I was like tapping. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I, stopped I like that. No, I stopped listening. I, uh, Jerry, started, I started to doodle. Jerry.anderson at There's BBC. a tap on the screen now. Jerry.Anderson at bbc.co.uk And of course, there is always the text messaging service, which many of you chose to use. It's 81771. You see, this is what Chris Evans and people like that do all the time. And they get big money in England. I, if, I could, if I had gone to England and did that, I'd have been over there. Does Chris function. Evans stand up to present his program? <laughs> Stop that, you. Stop it! I was quick there. <laughs> no, I was quick. I knew what you were thinking. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He Does sits he? down like everybody else. Does he? He does. I remember talking to Terry Wogan about him, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, when he took over from Terry Wogan's program. Terry was very guarded about it. And I said, what do you think of Chris Evans? He said, oh, he's very clever. Mm-hmm. I said, what do you mean clever? He said, he's very creative. I said, but do you like him? He's very creative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, he doesn't seem to have a sense of humor. He said, what makes you say that? I said, do you remember he was on with you the week before he took over from you? And you said to him, you said to him, well, uh, how did you get the job in Radio 2? Who did you apply to? And he said, oh, no, no, I didn't apply. I didn't apply. They asked me. Mm. In other words, he didn't realize you were joking. And I noticed that two or three times. Whenever you said something to him that was vaguely funny, he thought you were serious. That indicates to me that he doesn't have a sense of humor. I said, what do you think of that? He said, he's very creative. (laughs) She wouldn't tell you about Ringo Starr either. No, that's right. Remember you asked him about that? Yeah, I did. But we can't relate conversations that we have with people like Terry Wogan. These are private conversations. Uh I'm trying very careful not to give anything Mm -hmm. away. He told us other things, but I'm not allowed to say what they are because I don't want to embarrass him in any way. I turned the TV off last night at um, about five past. Six. I never turned it on at all. No, I turned it off, and then I remembered uh, Joe was on at eight, and it tur- I, 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 it wasn't great last night. What was he, do- what, Joe, I, Joe Mahan, what was right. he doing? Joe, uh, it was, it was, it was in Fermanagh last night. I think it was a Fermanagh. He's never good in Fermanagh. He doesn't seem to relate to Fermanagh. It was the cave. It's a Donegal man. See, I'm not a cave man. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but he was on, you know, I and know. rocks. What, what, was he, what was he saying? No, well, well, well he, he wasn't good last night. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't get into it last night. I really talking? couldn't get into it. Was he talking it. about stalactites and stalagmites? No, I was expecting him to go down under the ground, but I hope he wouldn't because I don't like under the ground. I don't like, I don't like men get into the caves. And I'm going light, down light now stone under the ground. Down. That's right. And the reason I'm going down now under the ground is because Kyle doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't. I what couldn't. was he saying, Sean? Well, that, that's what I mean. I just really couldn't get into it last night. Nothing think, stuck. Nothing stuck with no, you. No, that's that's the whole thing. Uh-huh. I was disappointed in him last night. I All really right, was. Then. But I hear there've been some wonderful <laughs> shows on. When I'm so I, I made a point of staying in last night to watch Joe. <laughs> You have no life. No. You really have no and life. And I turned the TV off. Anyone who stays in deliberately to watch Joe Mahan, and we like we like Joe Mahan, but anyone who stays in deliberately to watch a man looking at trees and saying, how do you how do, you do that? There's something wrong, isn't there? Anyway, no, I, let's I, go. I, I did. What? I, I had the choice. I looked out the window and I says, I wonder if it's going to rain. I <laughs> I could go out and play golf, and I said, "No, Joe's on it, and I have to see Joe. I have to see his new series." You don't really seem to realise that you should get yourself what is called a recording device. No, that I had those things before, and I never watched them. No, I never watched any program that I recorded. I recorded one program last night. 
and I'm going to watch it tonight. It's called. It was on Channel Four. What was that? It's I love BBC Four. Four. BBC Four. I love. I love BBC Four. There's nothing on. Treasures of Ancient Rome. What time is that on? Nine o'clock. That's an hour of that, and I'm looking for. I'm going. You know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to sit down, throw everybody out, and watch that because that's what I like. Anyway, let's go on to more serious matters. Were you tapping the screen there? What does that mean? Janet was tapping the screen. What did she mean by that? It, at that, uh, at Tommy, that stage, Tom, there was someone Tom, on the phone? Tommy's on one. All right, then. Hello, good morning, Tommy. <laughs> <coughs> uh, we may have caught you at an awkward moment, <laughs> Tommy. Tommy, how are you today? Hello, Tommy. Where is he? He's on uh, one. Uh, Tommy. Hello. Sorry, we may have caught you at an awkward moment. I'm terribly sorry. Is there anything we <laughs> That's his Viking horn. It's not, it's it doesn't not sound to me like a Viking no. horn. I'm afraid uh, it could be an ersatz or indeed a fake a Viking horn. Uh, uh, what are you blowing, sir, if I may ask you? We'll settle for an authentic fake Viking horn. Okay. Well, tell me, you have to describe this thing that you're blowing. Well, uh, it, it is a, a metal instrument, uh, mm -hmm. something like a cornet, a mm -hmm. little bigger, with a big bulbous end on it. A big bulbous end on it? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, I, I may suggest, <laughs> I, I could suggest maybe that that's a flugelhorn. A flugelhorn? A yeah. flugelhorn. Well, you're an expert that has been such a musician of, of countless years, you no, know. No, but my brother was a trombone player and a trumpet player, so he brought in all kinds of things into the house, and I examined them at great length. Uh, a flugelhorn, a, a bass trombone, a, a regular trombone, a valve trombone, and then he had, uh, at one stage, he had a trumpet, and then he had a... There's another type of trumpet, which is a piccolo trumpet. No, he didn't have a piccolo trumpet. Anyway, I used to see all these things. But you never saw an authentic Viking horn. <laughs> now, there's a Viking horn. What's your number? <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear Tommy's. Come on, give me your horn. Difficult to blow. Yeah, Tommy's going to get the one. The girl no. said to the sailor, Come on. You need, blood in your veins. you need to be like an Anderson, you know, with plenty of Viking blood in your veins. <coughs> no Viking blood. Right. Give us a blast, lad. Go on, go on. Go on. However, go on, go on. Give it a blow. Give it a blow. Tell me what's going on. That's the, the Vikings on the loch on Saturday 8th September. Oh, really? Down at the Maffrey Country Park. Remember we asked you to be Viking chief, but you were otherwise engaged. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't come this day. I can't be a chief on a Saturday. No, uh, but we have, a, uh, we have a competition for chiefs. But, uh, really, you're probably well away because the chief gets killed, you see, in the battle. Does he? And regularly burned with a boat ready. Oh, what's oh, Redgum? Oh. Uh, sent to Valhalla? Yes, yes. So what they do is they put the corpse in the boat and then they, they push it out and then they set it on fire. Well, we shoot out flaming arrows onto it and put it on fire. Uh, what's, what does the fire brigade service uh, say about this? Oh, they have to stand by along with the ambulance <laughs> service and the police and, and uh, road closures and all the rest of it, you know. Uh, holding their hose pipes? Yeah. Well, tell me this. In, in the event of me uh, having to decline your offer to be a Viking chief, can I ask you... Who have you decided? It's not Frank Mitchell, by any chance. Mm -hmm. uh, no, come, no, no, no. Uh, come on, uh, come uh, on. It's uh, John Fee. You wouldn't know John Fee. Uh, do, do you know um, uh, Anna Moore Harvey? That's a, that's a donkey. Yes. Yes, I do know Anna You know Moore the Harvey. owner of Anna Moore Harvey? I'm familiar with the donkey, yes. You know the owner, too. Yes, I do, but I can't remember his name uh, offhand. Uh, John Fee. That's it. Yeah, well, John's going to stay. He has a hairstyle, you see. He has indeed, the flowing locks. Yeah, for fully uh, re real, authentic hair, Viking hairstyle. Well, I'm pleased to see that because I was unable to be the chief that you've picked a complete unknown. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Well, he's going to lead uh, Anna Moore Harvey into the defence. The Viking, uh, for the oh. Viking charge, the Vikings charge off their boats coming ashore. That sounds John like John will be there with Anna Moore Harvey. That sounds like a hell of a day. Leading the defence. Uh huh. So what? Uh, people can go along and witness this. Oh yes, we're inviting anybody to come along. So it's all free, free day, free event, eleven o'clock to five this Saturday. And where oh, is a host, a host of uh, side activities, and the Vikings will be there just demonstrating Viking crafts and they'll be cooking Viking meats and oh, there's a, a terrible lot of games and things for children arranged and there's archery contests and uh, sword contests and a lot of things to make it a. a uh, uh, sort of day of normality. We hear so much now what people think is normality. Well, Stephen Nolan was on talking about what we call normality nowadays. If you listen but, to him, you put your head in the oven. Yes, but this is normality, you know. Where exactly. People uh, 
do things, and you can bring your sandwiches and your coke and sit out in the park and enjoy the day. And where is this exactly? This is at Mahri Country Park. You take off at either junctions 11, 12, uh, uh, or 13 uh, off the motorway and uh, sign down to the park all day. That's this Saturday? This Saturday, yes. Starts at what, 11 o'clock in the morning? At 11 o'clock and it goes on actually to on up to 6. It, it finishes off with an authentic uh, Viking banquet. <laughs> Starts at 6.30. Yes. The tickets for that, that's the only thing you have to pay for, is the tickets, £10, uh, pig, on the, uh, pig on the spit. Pig on the spit. Uh, w- uh, this has to be carefully worded with authentic refreshments. Ah. All free, you know. Are we talking a drop of the crater here? Uh, okay, oh, no. made it, uh, by a man called Arthur, yes. Oh. Well, do you know what I would, I would love? A bit of pork off the hoof and a drop of the crater. With uh, authentic refreshments, yes. That would, uh-huh. smart, that would smarten your trotters. Listen, thank you very much and hope you have a great day. Yeah, that's uh, this Saturday. Everybody welcome. No charge. What about a blast of the horn? No day on the park. I'm just about to ask him. Give us a blast before you go. I'll give you one first. (laughs) (laughs) That's not... That boat will sink. Oh, let some of them out every day. (laughs) All right, then. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye. bye. Oh, my God. (laughs) That wasn't a bad horn, you know. He came round at the end. Aye, but he wasn't... uh, No, he didn't get it right. He wasn't great, no. He wasn't great. Jones, where our neighbors a long time back. They live right down the road from us in a shack just like our shack. We worked in the fields together and we learned to count on each other. When you live off the land, you don't have time to think about another man's color. Oh, the cotton was high and the corn was growing fast. That was another place and another chat. We sit out on the front porch in the evening when the sun went down. Willie would play and Lara would sing and the children would dance around. And I'd bring over my guitar and we'd play into the night. And every now and then, Willie would grin before you play all right, and that man is so good. Lord, the cotton was high and the corn was growing fast. But that was another place and another time. I remember we'd hitch up the mules when Saturday rolled around. We'd always stop by Willie's house and say, Do y'all need anything from town? Say now, but why don't y'all stop on your way back home? And I'll get Laura May to cook up some corn bones. You know they could. Oh, oh, the cotton was high and the corn was growing fast. But that was another place. They'd given, and we all knew we'd have to move if I was gonna make a living. So we all moved off, and we went our separate ways. And it sure was hard to say goodbye to Willie and Laura May Jones. So the cat was high, and the corn was growing fast. Yes, it was, but that was another place. The years roll past our door And we heard from them no more Till I saw Willie downtown the other day I said, y'all stop by tonight And we can sit down and eat a bite We'd love to see your children in Laura May Head real slow, the 
spoke with his eyes so can This is another place and another time Down the cattle pie and the corn was growing fast But that was another place and another time Not now the cattle pie and the corn was growing Was another place and another That's another great record. That's uh, Tony Joe White. That's a song called Willie and Laura Mae Jones. That's from way back in the 60s. Is it? Oh, yes. It just goes to show you there's some good stuff there, not the stuff that you play. (laughs) (laughs) You know, if you look hard enough, you find that good stuff. And that's Tony Joe White. Uh, I hope you don't think I'm being offensive in any way. It's slightly hurtful. I know, but not too bad. No, no. Tol- no tolerable. Yeah. That's from a, a three CD collection, which is great, which I got uh, not so long ago. And I bought this, by the way. <laughs> which is unusual. <laughs> yeah. Surprise yeah. registered in your voice. Yeah. Uh, it's called the Tony Joe White Collection from an, uh, a Golden Stars label. You can check that out. It's really good. I'm going to play Little Green Apples before the end of the program. Oh, please do. God didn't mean yeah. Little Green Apples and Green and Apples. So There's a wee call for you. Is it summer time? God didn't mean green apples. Dimpna. Dimpna. Yeah. Dimpna. Hello, Dimpna. Hello, Dimpna. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? I'm all right, Dimpna. If I was any better, I'd probably be under arrest. <laughs> what can we do for you today? I have a bit of a problem. I was wondering if your listeners could help me. Go ahead. I stole nail polish on brand new trousers last night in three places. <laughs> Just a second. Um, uh, can I just, just a second? Yes. Sean, yes. what's going on here? That's uh, Janet's call. I, I don't know what Dimpna wants. Yeah. Dimpna, Janice said Dimpna is crying for help and she's turned to you. You know that Monday is stain removal day. Well, we didn't realise that. Did we didn't not, realise Did you that. not get the memo? No. Monday, stain removal. Anyway, Tuesday, I think... I think Tuesday, we, meat safes. We can Wednesday, help, lost dogs. We can help Dimpna. Go ahead. Of course we can help Dimpna. Dimpna, I'm sorry you came in the wrong day. You'll have to ring in Monday. Oh, you're joking. <laughs> I can't wait till Monday. <laughs> well, tell me what you've done. I dropped nail polish on my trousers. And they're a linen mix. Was there a drink involved? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even drink it. <laughs> a linen mix. What they're is like that? a linen mixture. What does that mean, a linen mix? What's that, some well, kind of strange language that I don't understand? A linen mix? You know, you know linen. Well, it's a mixture of linen and stuff. I wouldn't be able to get a linen mix. Would I be able to get a linen <laughs> mix? <laughs> yes, you can. Mark and Spencer's are getting from me. <laughs> yes, okay, right. And, and what, what seems to be your problem if you know I whether... I can't get it out. <laughs> Is it any? Is it any? Well, don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. Dimpna, what about an ice cube? <laughs> <laughs> I always like that. What? Eh? What, what else? A nice cube. Just an ice cube. <laughs> well, we, 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 did you try, try putting them in the freezer? <laughs> if you can't get it out, you should always use a nice cube. No. I've always. And, and you, you freeze it. <laughs> You freeze it. I freeze the, what do you call it, the nail varnish. Freeze and the then, nail varnish. And then pick it off. <laughs> oh, right. What, what do you think of that? That's, this is me. Sean, thank you for your help. Uh, I, 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 indicating, no, indicating, indicating, indicating uh, Dimpna, that you don't think I'm of much help. You're but, not much help, no. <laughs> I listen to you every I <laughs> would. What I would do, Dimpna, is I would get your trousers. Yeah. Take your trousers off. To, well, to get your trousers and put them into a plastic bag and put them into the freezer. Good man. And right. then when the trousers are nice and cold. No, and the, put and them the, on again. <laughs> no, don't, don't put them on. Don't, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not listening to Jerry. I'm no. listening to you. And then take the trousers out and then try and pick the nail pick varnish. Try and pick it off. Gently pick it off. And I think it's, oh, I mean, good man. I think I'll it'd be worth try. trying, wouldn't it? Gently pick it off. You see, this is why, Have Sean. Have you tried nail polish remover, <laughs> don't you? I've tried nail polish for Well, then, I think it's the freezer for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All Sean, right, then. Yes, you see, I'm, this, is, you. 
This Thank is you Debna. so much for your help. <laughs> yes, Debna. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Debna. You. See, this is why I'm glad you're here. Yes. You see, I just collapsed into a paroxysm. What is that? A paroxysm? Or a, a, a parox? What's that word? I don't know what you're trying to say. A collapse into an paroxysm of laughter. Well, There's a word I can't. There? I can't figure what the word is. All right. I don't know anyway. what it is. A, per, a what? What does it mean? What does he a pro, say? I, I, he's trying to tell me the word, but he's wrong too. Yeah. <laughs> he said as well, just leaving it alone. I'll just leave it, yeah. Whoa, well, Dumpna, you're not saying cheerio, Dumpna. I already have. Is Dumpna still there? No. Oh, poor boy. I think she went off me. She senses it that I'm less than serious. to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave. This is BBC Radio Ulster. With BBC News at 11 o'clock, this is Jenny Lowry. The Prime Minister has announced a new Secretary of State for Northern Ireland. Theresa Villiers, who is a Minister at the Department of Transport, is replacing Owen Patterson. His new role will be announced shortly. The Health Secretary, Andrew Lansley, becomes leader of the House of Commons and the former Justice Secretary, Ken Clark, is moving to an advisory role. The changes are the part of the first major government reshuffle since David Cameron came to power. The Deputy Prime Minister, Nick Clegg, says the moves are aimed at boosting economic growth. This coalition government's priority is, is delivering policies to boost jobs and growth in the British economy and that's what this reshuffle will all be about. Alban McGuinness has accused the Social Development Minister, Nelson McCausland, of breaking the ministerial code of office. The SDLP MLA made the claim on the BBC's Nolan show after the DUP minister refused to call on loyalists to abide by Parades Commission rulings. He is breaching his pledge of office, and I think that's a very, very serious 
situation for any uh, government minister. If he is not prepared to uphold the rule of law unequivocally, uh, then why is he still in office? The Assistant Chief Constable of the PSNI has said politicians should stop posturing and find a resolution to the parading dispute which has sparked two nights of rioting in North Belfast. The police say 15 officers were injured during last night's trouble. The rioting started at Carlisle Circus where up to 200 nationalist and loyalist youths gathered and threw missiles including fireworks and petrol bombs at police officers. A university which has had its power to sponsor foreign students for visa applications is mounting a legal challenge to the decision. London Metropolitan University insists it did follow all the procedures designed to weed out bogus applications. Now with all the latest sport, here's Thomas Niblock. Michael McKillop clinched his second gold medal of the London Paralympic Games last night by winning the 1500 metres final. The Glengormley athlete, who won 800 metre gold on Saturday, was so far ahead of runner-up Brad Scott of Australia, he had time to wave to the crowd before the finish. Moving on to golf and Rory McIlroy's won another tournament in America. A final round of 67 put him one shot clear of Louis Oosterhuizen in the PGA event in Boston and McIlroy now tops the points list for the end of season playoffs. Later this morning, Wales coach Warren Gatland will be named as the next coach of the British and Irish Lions. Gatland already has permission from the Welsh Rugby Union to miss next year's Six Nations to prepare. Thanks, Thomas. And what's happening weather-wise? Barra Best can tell us. It's a fine day with plenty of dry, bright weather and good spells of sunshine. The northwesterly winds will be light, but they will make it feel a little bit fresher with highs of 17 degrees along the north coast, a degree or two warmer elsewhere. Some late sunshine around this evening, giving way to a dry night with clear spells and light winds, feeling a little bit colder with lows for some dipping into single figures. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. In Belfast, the broken down lorry on the West Link at Clifton Street has been removed now and traffic is returning to normal in the area. Elsewhere, Whitesides Road in Ballymena is closed in both directions until the 13th of September. And in Cookstown, the Drum Road is also closed both ways from Sweep Road to Sandholes Road with diversions in place. Laura McDade reporting. Travel News on BBC Radio Ulster. On Talkback today with me, William Crawley, the Orange Order speaks for the first time after a second night of rioting in Belfast. We've got a new Secretary of State, Theresa Villiers. We have all the gen on her. Relocation, relocation, relocation. 800 government jobs going from Belfast to Bally Kelly. Would you go? Is it fair to ask people to go lock, stock or to commute? Give us a call. 08459 555 678. Also today, Prince Harry, is it the greatest royal comeback of all time and what's going on with Ronaldo, the world's most highly paid footballer, says he feels sad. Join us at 12. Thank you, William Crawley. Our talk back coming up at 12 o'clock in approximately 55 minutes time, but of course you can do the math yourself. Here's a singer who's very, very good, singer-songwriter from Kilray, Emma Reid. This is a very good little song here. This is called Magnet. This is her new three-track, four-track EP, I suppose you would call it. Oh dear, oh dear, what happened there? Oh, let's see, what happened there? Something strange happened, do you know what happened oh, there? Well, I think the CD stopped. No, it's not the CD, no. It must have. No, it's not CD. something, no, but something else. Well, why didn't you put it into another department, <laughs> compartment? Go on, is that I'll try that again, because I don't think it was the CD. I bet it is. If it was the CD this time, I'll... No, I think it was something in the, in the machinery here.
I wake up in the morning with my head down in my eyes, and she say, "Hi." Hi. And I stumble over to the breakfast table while the kids are going off to school. Goodbye. And she reaches out, takes my hand. Squeezes it and says, "How you feel, huh?" And I look across at smiling lips that warm my heart, and I see my morning sun. And if that's not loving me. Got to say, oh God, didn't make little green apples and it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. There's no such thing as Dr. Seuss, Disneyland, and Mother Goose. There's no mystery. God didn't make little green apples, and it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. And when myself is feeling low, I think about a face of glow, and it eases my mind. And sometimes I call up at home.
And I asked her if she could get away and maybe meet me somewhere. And we could get a bite to eat. You know, she always drops what she's doing. And hurries down to meet me. And I'm always late. But she sits waiting patiently. And she smiles when she first sees me. Cause she's made that way. And if that's not loving me. Then all I got to say. God didn't make little green apples And it don't snow in Minneapolis When the winter comes There's no such thing as make-believe Puppy dogs and autumn leaves And baby guns Oh, God didn't make little green apples that's that other track from Tony Joe White. I promised I'd play. It's called Little Green Apples from that Tony Joe White collection. Some messages here from the people. Look, you see, that uh, that wasn't a CD at all. That was some extraneous force uh, that was interfering with the airwaves and Radio Ulster. Something weird, some kind of alien noise came out of there. That wasn't a CD at all. Of course I've been blamed for it. He's only back and the CDs are starting to stick. That didn't happen when Sean was on. You see. You see. But that wasn't the CD sticking at I all. I think it was. It wasn't. Because if you notice, when I turned it off, when I was speaking, there was an echo. There was something in the machine, in the innards of the machine. But well, you can't basically. blame Ken, because he's in holiday. I can blame no, Ken. Ken's on holiday. I don't care if he's in holidays or not, I blame him anyway. Jerry, could you please wish our friend Hockey all the best in his new job as Donegal Celtic manager? Onwards and upwards, the Hawk from Marty, Dog, Bones, Dixie and Kel. Thank you, Turkey Neck and Dennis Healy. <laughs> <laughs> That's an obscure reference I know, I to know politician Dennis Healy and his eyebrows, which were his distinguishing feature, uh, associating his eyebrows with your particular yeah, set. Yeah. Uh, I knew you'd burst into a paroxysm. Sorry, I can't say paroxysm. That's the word I was looking for, paroxysm. A paroxysm of laughter. But I couldn't get it. Uh, Jerry and Shan, people are complaining about your pronunciation of your name. I got an email Not yesterday. That again. Yes, Not it that says, again. and everywhere else it says you call you Sean Coyle, but you don't call yourself Sean Coyle. You call yourself Shan Coyle, yeah. and they say that Shan is female. S I A N. So, what are you, man or a woman? No, stop it. All right, could you please wish good luck to my? But I know why you do that because that's Irish. Sian Shan is S I A N, which is a female name in Gaelic. But S E A N pronounced Shan is the way that uh, people, Irish speakers, uh, uh, pronounce Shan. That's what I'm called uh, in the house. Why well, don't you just call yourself what everybody else calls you? You started the Shan bit. I didn't start you did. that. I never go. I don't care what you are. I was always. And, and I, I, I laugh at, uh, at at Nolan. Nolan sort of sort of tries, says Shan, thinking he's annoying me, and he's saying saying my name correctly. Oh, he's a hateful little fat boy. <laughs> uh, could you please wish good luck to Matt the painter, Pete the plumber, Noel the lecky man, uh, Wee John the roofer, and Home Fit Larry, who head off to Rwanda tomorrow to demolish mud huts and build a new village. Guys like those should be knighted. Yeah, they should be instead of every athlete that wins a gold medal. Thanks, mate, for all in Cocoon Corner casement. If possible, could you play Build by the House Martins, beautiful south. Do you have that in your machine? Build we'll, 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 we'll have it by the House Martins. We'll have, have a look at that, because those guys are out there in Rwanda. The chit box. Uh, you know, and they're, they're working for nothing. Uh-huh. Uh, they're out there working uh, and building yes. uh, houses for those poor people. So uh, it's the least we can do. Uh, does and Jerry hark at you sitting in there. <sighs> So aren't I going to Cuba? No, but you're saying, um, you're complaining about the athletes looking for gold medals. Yeah. They're not looking for gold medals. People are, I know, are, what's wrong are, with are the people? starting this campaign. But what about you? you? You're the boy. You're the boy. You're touting for a gong. Why, why should you get a gong for sitting in there pl- playing faulty CDs? When did, you ever hear, you when, when did you ever hear me touting for a gong? You say it all the time. Not on the radio. Yes, you do. I do not. You do. Janet, doesn't he? Yes. What yes, Janice says, what do I yes. say? You say, oh, overlooked yet again when the New Year's Honours list or whatever's out. And you say, oh, overlooked again. Oh, maybe next year. Maybe they'll, they'll recognise me. Recognise you for what? 
is a very hurtful thing no, to say. No, no. So How do you know that I would accept one if offered? You said you would. I asked you. I yeah, know I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does Jerry know that on the BBC Radio Ulster website, the programme is described as offering requests, dedications, and lots of good music to brighten up your morning? Does it say that? Yes. Surely an issue for the Trades Descriptions <laughs> Act. <laughs> Does it really say that? Yeah, apparently to get, so. To get that changed. Jerry, could you please play Donna Taggart's version of Raglan Road? A very fine version it is too, and uh, I will play it very shortly. Uh, would you give me a blast of Billy the Kid? Would that be out of the question? No, it wouldn't be out of the question, because I know the version which you, to which you refer. It's... Um, Billy the Kid. No, what, what, what is he talking about? Billy, Billy the, the kid? kid. You play the song called Billy the Kid. Do, which one's that? I don't know. Billy the Kid. It's not Billy the Kid. You do. You it, play a song called Billy the Kid. Is it not called Billy Joe McKay? No. Billy My name's Billy kid. Joe McKay. You play a song called Billy the Kid. How does it go? I don't know how it goes, but I know you play Billy the Kid. I don't know if I did or not. You do. Do I? Yes. All right. That's somebody like... Who? Let me see. Somebody else. Somebody like somebody else? That's not Mark Jamino. It's How somebody. Help. <laughs> How helpful some, is that? Somebody. Ah. What do you call the guy that buried the stuff out in the, 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 the highway? <laughs> they call the guy who st- stole all the money and buried it and they came along and they built a highway over his Rodney loot. Rodney Crowell. I think it could be Rodney Crowell. It could be him. No, it's not Rodney yeah. Crowell. Well, who it's is not it Billy then? The kid. I think it's, it's, it's... Is it not Guy Clark? I'm looking at this Maybe stuff here. It's somebody like that. Uh, that Henry, it's it's, it's, uh, last Gunfighter Ballad? No. Mm, the guitar? No, not that. Billy the Kid. Billy, the best the, my name's Billy Joe McKay. I had yesterday. Anyway. Janice said we think it's, she thinks it's Billy Joel. I've never played anything by Billy Joel in my life. Could you accept that song that was really good? We didn't start the fire. Marty Robbins? She Marty says. Robbins? I never. You play Marty Robbins. I don't play Marty Robbins. Could you please play Johnny Cash? For Big Shah and Carnlock, who is 51 today, so uh, congratulations and happy birthday. Uh, dear Puppet Master and Mono Brow, would Tom you please... Tom Petty. Tom Petty? Sings Billy the Kid. I've never played it. Would you please play some Bob Seger out of Sean's jukebox? Ah, there it is there. Me and Billy McKid. Me, Billy McKid. Me, 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 me. I see, I'm excited. Um, me and Billy the Kid, we never got along. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's the song. No, oh, yeah, that's it. Rambling Jack, Jack Elliot. Elliot. Yeah, have you got that there? You have it. I, I don't have it with me. Yeah, but you play it. I know, I do play it. That's the me and that's Billy the, the kid. Yeah, we never got that's along. Billy, there you see. That's it. That's it. Anyway, you're you very excited. Uh, very excited. Did what about play? Andrew? Janet said. What about him? He's won one. Is he? Hello, good morning, Andrew. Yes, he is. Good morning. How are you today? Well, Jerry, I'm fine, and I hope you don't think that I'm being enormously presumptuous to even considering you on this subject, but I just wanted to mention to you the word that you're searching for beginning with p and i hate to sort of correct somebody with such enormous knowledge as you in these things because you're you're very very good at these things but i think the word you may be searching for is paroxysm that's it and of course the accent is on the first vowel the long vowel the beginning paroxysm paroxysm yeah i hope that that's the word yeah is that it I, I feel very guilty for even trying that. Well, I, d- I, feel, I, I feel equally guilty. So there's a sort of an equality of misery here because I feel terribly guilty about even thinking of ringing up to perhaps draw to your attention the, the, the perhaps more common way of you know, pronouncing it, which is paroxysm. Because I know you're... I mean, I, I listen to your program every day simply because of your way with words with your companion here. The two of you are just fantastic. And I mean, Thank you. I'm, I'm speechless with awe at your control of the words as they come from your wonderful mouth. But in this instance, I was, dare I say, sort of wincing. Yes. I, well, you see, grammar has never been my strong point. I'll tell you why. And uh, you, you may understand this. And uh, I, had, I had terrible trouble with this in England when I was over on Radio 4. See, what, what actually happened is, you see, I am, I am basically self-educated. And so uh, if, if you're self-educated, you, you normally you read all the time. So you don't normally hear people pronouncing the words that you read. Mm-hmm. So, in, in actual fact, many words you pronounce wrongly uh, because you've never heard anyone say them and you've only read them. And uh, that happens to me occasionally. And uh, I would never, ever... No, I'm not saying you should... I know you've got the right motives, but if someone mispronounced a word to me, I would never uh, pull them up on it uh, in, in, in a kind of an insulting way. But, I mean, I, w- I would... I, <laughs> well, I now feel completely guilt-ridden. Oh, listen, him in there. <laughs> listen... 
Uh, you see, I'm now filled with complete shame, and I, I, I am no. so apologetic. But, no. um, and I, I appreciate, I mean, if you really think you're self-taught, yeah. which I think is slightly de- de- deprecating. Listen to me hesitating over the words. No, no. But, but I mean, you, well, you, you are a, what is it, the University of Life? I mean, you talk Oh, no, 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 no I, 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 I did go to university. I, I went, but I went as a mature student. I went to university when I was 32. Did you? Oh, yeah. Where did you go? I, I went, uh, first of all, I spent a year in McGee uh, oh. College, as it was then. I did a foundation course. And then I did a three-year uh, uh, d- uh, d- degree, uh, BSc, uh, Social Anthropology and Sociology in uh, Korean. And then I did a year diploma in continuing education. And I taught for a little while as an adult educator. Do you know, I didn't know that. You've never told us that before. <laughs> Not see, half. The, 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 you, you well, I mean, I oh know, yeah, scorn, I voice scorn, in the scorn my simplicity, Sean. <laughs> scorn my education. What? Go on, laugh, you brute. Laugh, you brute. Ah, he's fit. He was. Uh, he's the type of boor that we have to deal with. He <laughs> was. He uh, was a. Part-time. The bully of this. The bully in the school. Part time social worker in Japan. Oh, look at bully that little fellow in the glasses who's reading a book in the corner. Yeah. Bully him. Well, I didn't realise all that, and I'm, I'm hugely impressed, That's and I'm right. even more humble now. No, but you see, the point was what I was, what I meant to say was that uh, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't really uh, have any formal education until I was well into my thirties. So by that time, all all my bad habits had been formed, my grammatical habits, and ah. the people in England don't like me at all because of that. Because sometimes I don't pronounce my words properly, and I don't really care because what I've always thought that if you understand what I mean, that's okay. Do you know what does it matter? If exactly. people in England didn't appreciate it, it's why we have to come here to I appreciate know. you. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying anything about English people. Radio 4 is a very unusual thing. It's like, uh, if you mispronounce a word, it's like shooting your granny. <laughs> <laughs> you mean there's nothing worse you could possibly do? John Humphreys, I feel like battering him with a stick sometimes because he's so pedantic. Anyway, listen, thank you very much. I appreciate what you're saying, and I, I appreciate you calling. Well, thank you both for giving me months, no, not months, years of pleasure, and I hope many, many more to come. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. What a nice man. Yes, nice you notice I didn't ask him any questions. No. Uh, could you help Pete? <laughs> can I? Pete. Yes, can you? Pete's on too. And Pete, Pete doesn't know where to turn, but do you? Oh, well, that must be unfortunate. So, so could you listen to Pete, please? I and will don't, listen don't to Pete. Pete's afraid, or a bit apprehensive, you may dismiss him out of hand. Oh, look at this. Look, I'm very disappointed. There's a gentleman who said he watched Treasures of Ancient Rome and sad to say it's not very good. Mary Beard was on it. Oh, my God, I can't You're stand You're not like Mary. that now, you see. Beard. I won't watch that tonight. No. Uh, uh, golf was on last night. Rory McIlroy, how much money did he win last night? I have no idea. I didn't watch it. I heard something. Janice in, in is the $10 million. $10 million? $10 million, yeah. Good luck to him. Great! That p- that Boston uh, p- golf tournament yeah. was ten million dollars. He won ten million dollars. He won Janet ten million dollars. Janet said, "I don't know." What would you do if you had ten million dollars now? Would you be in here tomorrow morning? Uh, no. <laughs> There's no quite. I've had one million dollars. I wouldn't be in here tomorrow morning. I'm half a, thousand, a million. I wouldn't be in here. If I had a thousand quid, I wouldn't be in here tomorrow morning. <laughs> Dear puppet master, no, I've done that already. Um, uh, information about the Clonard Monastery concert. Could you give it a mention on the Jerry Show, please? From Did you get information about a, a, mo- a, co- a concert in Clonard Monastery from Pat oh, Murphy? I, I did. Yes, you I did. I did. It's on my desk. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry about that. Mm-hmm. There's a wee call for you. It's please. got a big bulbous end. Thank God you're back, Jerry. <laughs> Hope you had a great holiday. Oh, sorry. Uh, hello, uh, sorry, who's this, Pete? Pete. Pete, good morning, Pete. Good morning, Jerry. How are you doing? Sorry for keeping you like that. Very, very best, my friend. Thanks very much. Listen, I know this is uh, probably going to make your eyes glaze over, but I just need a little bit of uh, information here. Yes, okay. And you are the only man in the entire world that can help me. I'll try. Right. I would like to know where in the Belfast or greater area can I get taps? Now, I don't mean taps that you stick on your bathroom. Yes. Engineering taps for cutting threads. Oh, I know what they are. Uh, You're you're talking to an apprentice uh, toolmaker. Gosh, me too. Six weeks, I lasted. (laughs) (laughs) How long did you last? As long as that. Oh, gosh, three years. (laughs) Oh, that's that's great. Did the whole thing. I think I was sacked immediately. Taps, I know what they are. I have no idea what they are. Tell them what they are. You tell me. I'll tell you what they are. They're like little little pegs, aren't they? Well, they're, they're basically for cutting threads 
That's you right. can have a tap which will cut a thread, a female thread, if, mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. if I may be so bold. I understand And a that. die will, ca- will uh, cut a male thread, which will then turn it into a screw or a machine screw, whatever you want to call it there. Okay. But yeah. I don't know anywhere um, in Belfast I can, I can uh, you know, get these things. And uh, being on the internet, of course, as soon as you put taps in there, yeah. you get bathroom taps, etc., cetera, et cetera. All um, right, uh, I did, did find a couple of places in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, where they sell metric taps, but I, I need uh, a, a specific, um, it's not metric anyway, it's a UNC thread that I need. Okay, well the people out there who are listening who know what you're talking about will know what you're talking about. Magic. And, and maybe perhaps someone will give us a ring and give you some kind of indication as to where you might get a thing uh, like that. There must be a, a machine tool supply yeah. somewhere in, in, to in around the Belfast area, but I couldn't find one. Okay, so give us a ring here if you can help this gentleman, 08459. Five 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 six seven eight. Ring immediately, and we'll pass it on to you. Thank Good you, sir. man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Do you hear my engineering talk? Yes, yeah? that was close to your heart there. I noticed that you became a different man. You came a wee man in there with a pair of green overalls on you. That's right. Even though it was only six weeks, I learned a lot. Uh, I, re- I remember the green overalls that you wore. You, not you, uh, but the, the 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 apprentices that were in the BSR where you worked. I used to wear green. little green overalls. <laughs> <laughs> it won't rain. And then I used to work for the Birmingham Sound Reproducers Company uh-huh. in Birmingham, and they wanted, <laughs> they wanted, <laughs> they, <laughs> they wanted uh, toolmakers. And what happened was, I was rebelling at school. You see, um, I had fallen out with all the teachers, and it's a long story. But I decided not to work anymore at school, and uh, I, for two years I didn't do anything. I just sat in the back and carried on because I was insulted. I was insulted by the teachers, so I withdrew my labour. So consequently, I only got two O-levels, which was no good to anybody. And uh, at the end of the year, when we are going to have to throw everybody out, they made us all go to work, and they made us all toolmakers, and they sent me to be a toolmaker. Can you imagine a bigger mistake than that? Anyway... 1.4 million, someone says he won. 1.4? Yeah. Somebody said 10. I heard 10 million yesterday. Yeah. But wouldn't the, if it was 10 million, wouldn't it be all over the papers today? Thank you. McMaster's Church Lane, Belfast for taps. Oh, McMaster's yes. Church Lane taps in, Belfast. Taps in Belfast. Taps in Castle yeah. Street. Ca- what? what? Taps in Castle Street. I don't know what it was. Uh, Jerry Show, uh, Engineering Equipment, Kennedy Way, Belfast. And that's from Mark. Try Jameson and Green in Anne Street in Belfast. So there's a lot of information coming in there. Give us that again. Just what do you want? Do you want McMaster's Church Lane in Belfast yes. for taps? Okay. All right, then. Uh, We've got some correspondence Kennedy, here. Uh, equ- uh, equ- engineering Equipment, Kennedy Way in Belfast. Wilson's of... Ray Cooter sang the Billy the Kid song. Uh, right, here it is here. Jameson and Green, Ann Street, Belfast. That's enough now, thank you. All right, then stop it. Uh, we have some correspondence here about uh, the ever-going and a long-lasting dispute about who is an Indian or not. Mm-hmm. A gentleman writes to me and he said, in reference to yesterday's debate about your Indian credentials, I have irrefutable evidence that you put an end to the slabbering you have had to endure when the subject arises. Jerry, you are an Indian. As I understand it, an Indian is a free spirit who lives in harmony with his environment and fellow man, acts on instinct, recognizes no boundaries, doesn't seek material fulfillment or seek approval from others, especially those in authority, and is patient and benevolent to those who don't understand or grasp his Indian ways. Let's examine the content of your show. Without a doubt, it crystallizes the essence of an Indian. Pure flea I can't say this. Pure, free-flowing improvisation, Charlie Parker, Miles Davis or Jimi Hendrix, who had a full-blooded Indian grandmother. To the Indian, radio playlists are foreign and makes the individual feel like a caged animal or, worse still, a dancing bear. You see, can you imagine an Indian playing Flash Your Lights at Me? Can you imagine that? All words are Indian words because the Indian is a master communicator and words are the tool of his trade, even tummy. Do you know that an Indian character in the Beano was called? Long Legs the Desert Boy. No. No? Little Tom. Little Tom? Little Tom. What? There was an Indian character in the Beano comic called Little Tom. 
muttered the fair dearest little. Tell me! Jerry, it was because you're an Indian that you did need buffalo. Why so? The Indian no longer hunts the great beasts, as there are so few left, and instead is content with the abundant domesticated animal products that are in no danger of extinction, like McDonald's or KFC. No Indian would ever eat buffalo meat just to be cool or trendy. Fashion means nothing to a brave. There's a great Indian tradition of storytelling, and as we know, you are that storyteller. That is when you get the chance to speak without interruption. And I do realise, if you read this out on the air, I predict that we will have several no's and lies already this morning. I like the stories you tell of the life of a travelling musician. Definitely an Indian lifestyle, but ironically not so if you happen to be a member of the band. The Indians, that is. Do you ever see the Indians, the band, the show band? Not one interruption during that letter. So, Jerry, as far as I can see, the debate is over. I rest my case in your defence. May you long continue to thwart the man at all costs. And I know that you're going to forever take us on that unpredictable journey for an hour and a half every day that entertains, informs and educates as the BBC should. Those of us who know how to listen, that is, because listening is Indian too. I'm going to take this letter. I'm going to post it on my wall. An Indian wouldn't call into the bakery every morning and buy one bun. Yes, he would. He would think about the tribe. <laughs> he would be providing food for the tribe back at work. Dear Papa Chin, I note that most What about your little squaw, your faithful squaw here? Do you know what the word squaw means? No. Well, don't but ask me anymore. <laughs> well, what about your little faithful Indian girl, then? What about her? You never bring her in a bun. I mean, I don't expect you to bring me in anything. Pocahontas? Well, okay, then we'll call her Pocahontas. <laughs> Why do you never give Pocahontas anything? Because she's already got a bun in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Took you a long time working that one around. <laughs> no, I didn't know where to say Here. that. Here. Why am I the only person who remembers Long Legs the Desert Boy? Because you're insane. That's why. <laughs> I note that most people delegate their choice of clothes to their significant other. In which case, does that mean that a man... This is another man writing. Does this mean that a man who is dressed by his wife cannot be an Indian, even if his wife has excellent taste? And if a man trusts his own taste to clothe himself, is he a metrosexual with a firm and confident view of his own image and someone who would moisturize on a regular basis, or even occasionally get spray tanned? What I mean is, can a man be an Indian and moisturise as well? Do you know what my answer to that is? Yes. Little plum. All right, then. Little plum, not little tum. All right, then, you're right. You're right, yeah. yeah. I wasn't sure. I couldn't remember his name. You sure there wasn't a little tum? No, little plum. Little plum's friend. Might have been little tum, little tummy. Anyway, never mind that. Can an Indian cook? Yes, he can. <laughs> I can hear his heart beat for a thousand miles And the heavens open every time he smiles And when I come to him, that's where I belong Yet I'm running to him like a river song He gives me love, 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 love Crazy love, he give me love, 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 crazy love. He's got a fine sense of humor when I'm feeling low down. And when I come to him, when the sun goes down, take away my trouble, take away my grief. Take away my heartache, I go right to sleep. You give me love, 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 crazy love. You give me love, 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 crazy love. Yes, I need him in the daytime. 
Yes, I need him in the night. Yes, I want to draw my arms around him. Kiss him, hug him, kiss him, hug him tight. When I'm returning from so far away, he gives me sweet love and brightens up my day. Yes, he makes me righteous. Yes, he makes me whole. Yes, he makes me mellow down to my soul. He gives me love, love, love. Cardboard sign, old and bent. Says friend for life, twenty-five cents. When did this start making sense? Man, it's really getting cold. Sometimes I forget things, I get confused. I could still be working, but they refuse. Now I'm living with the bums and the whores and the abused. Man, I hate getting old. Get away from here! Don't give 'em no money; they just spend it on beer. Homeless will work for food. Do anything that you gotta do when you're homeless. Now Betty sings a song no one hears. The wind begins to freeze her tears. She says, "God, it's been so many years." She's way past complaining. She sings a heartfelt melody. One begs for harmony. No, it's not what she thought it'd be. Hey, it could be raining. Homeless. Get away from here! Don't give 'em no money; they just spend it on beer. Homeless will work for food. Do anything that you gotta do when you're homeless. Life ain't easy. It takes work. It takes healing 'cause you're gonna get hurt. You can lose your faith. You can lose your shirt. You lose your way sometimes. You never really have control. Sometimes you just gotta let it go. When the final line unfolds, it don't always rhyme. Homeless, get away from here! Don't give 'em no money; they just spend it on beer. Homeless will work for food, do anything that you gotta do when you're homeless. Get away from here! Don't give 'em no money; they just blow it on beer. Homeless will work for food. Do anything that you gotta do when you're homeless.
cardboard sign old and bent Says friend for life, 25 cents That's a great song by Guy Clark. It's from an album called This One's For Him, a tribute to Guy Clark, but it's not sung by Guy Clark. It's sung by a fellow called Sean Camp, C-A-M-P. And before that, we had uh, Cassandra Wilson singing a Van Morrison song called Crazy Love from an album of covers that was out about, oh, 1994, actually, called No Prima Donna, featuring all kinds of artists singing uh, uh, Van Morrison songs. My favourite of which is Liam Neeson, Coney Island. (laughs) (laughs) In case we're starved. Some pot shrimps. <laughs> Is there somebody on the line? Yes, here? please. Good, yes, please. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Tummy, tummy. Brawly, brawly. Colleague, colleague. Hello, good morning. Hello. Yes, good morning. How are you? Is that Jerry Anderson? I'm afraid so. Good man, good man. I hope you can help me. I'm I'm in an awful dilemma. Yes. Yeah. I I have put I have put in a pair of new new black jeans and a pair of new chinos in the washing machine. And the black jeans was all run into the chinos, and I can't get them out, and I'm near away in the head. And the um, color catcher isn't taking the black stain out of the chinos. Just a second, please, would you? Uh, yes, Sean. Uh, yes. Uh, did I make not make it clear that stained clothes and indeed soiled, whatever you call it, are Monday? Yes, but as you started, I thought you'd finish today. What is that again? Sorry, I thought maybe perhaps you'd come on the incorrect day, but we've decided that today is going to be trouser day. So tell me what you've done again. I have put two pair of trousers in, a pair of new black jeans and a pair of jeans, which is cream, and washed them together. And Mm. all that I have run out of the black jeans into the chinos, and I can't get the dirt. Well, you see, I'm going to be very cruel now and suggest that perhaps you should have known that in the first place. Yeah, I know, but if I was as smart as you, I would have knew that, but I'm not. <laughs> you see, nobody would do that. You're the only person well, I know who would Unfortunately, do... I've done it, and I want you to see, can, does anybody mm-hmm. know how to rectify it? And ca- colour catcher is not working. No. Do you know what I think? I think it may be too late. Maybe. Thanks I think... very much. No, 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 I'm, say, I'm, I'm saying you must be, prepare yourself for the worst. You must prepare yourself for the possibility that the chinos may be hammered. What about bleach? There's a no, you can't put plates in them. Why not? They would make them weird looking. What is? Yeah. Uh-huh. So, I I so what are you talking about? You know nothing about I this. I don't. Kind of I thing. just thought maybe we to be tap full of soak the chinos in vanish. Soap, soak the chinos. What did Janet say? Soak the chinos in vanish. Vanish. In vanish. In yeah. vanish. That's yeah. someone's yeah. ring and saying that. Mm-hmm. And that's from Janet. Soak the chinos in vanish. Yes. Yeah, so does soak that make any up. sense to you? Vanish. Vanish. Will that work? I don't know. Janet, will that work? According to the lady. According to the lady. According to the caller, it works. So So I I suggest you do that immediately before the chinos become ossified. Okay, that's super. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Jerry. Good man. Bye. 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 I thought I handled that well. Oh, you handled it wonderfully well. There's another call for you on (sighs) too. Hello, good morning. Hello, is that you, Jerry? Yes, it is, yes. Yeah, I have no intentions, actually, of phoning you because I find you terribly dismissive. Well, but, it all depends. On behalf of your, your good friend and the entertainer, Sean Coyle, uh-huh. I've phoned in to point out that Long Legs, the desert boy, certainly did and probably does exist. Oh, but he's not an Indian. Uh, sorry? He's not an Indian. Oh, he was of mixed blood. He certainly mm-hmm. was. He was not of. Uh, he was not from Northern Ireland. Yes, he was. I mean, he was a Catholic and a Protestant. <laughs> no, he was actually one who believed in the Great Spirit, okay. and I don't mean Bushmills. Uh huh. And what uh, uh, what mixed race goes through his veins? What what what? Well, I, I wouldn't be a genealogist now, but I can assure you that the man existed, and he runs through the desert with a loincloth, accompanied right. by his bobcat. The bobcat was his protector and friend. That sounds like a bad combination to me, a loincloth and a bobcat. Listen, Sean, that, that what, uh, from your experience, Sean, what nationality do you think a long legs the desert I, boy might have been? I don't know. I, 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 I was very, very young, and I remember long... I don't even know. What did long legs the desert boy do? Uh, He's a runner. Rodney. Rodney. But anyway, what, what, what was the stories about? I can't well, remember. he protected the innocent, as all great heroes. Yeah. And uh, that would have included uh, people on benefits. 
Um, um, I'm, uh, I'm now prevaricating because life is so kind. All right, then. Okay, so you can... a long time ago. What, what, what um, comic was it in Broadway? It was either in the Beano or the Dandy. Yeah, I think it may have been the Beano. Right, so now we've confirmed that Long Legs of Desert was a mixed race. Yes. Yeah. All right, then. Thank you very much for that. Just before you leave, I point out that unlike uh, Mr. Anderson, he was not follically challenged. He's a good head of her. That's Although, right. There was no need for that. No, okay, and on that note, I said, cheerio, a lap up my sleeve. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> He's laughing up his sleeve, so he is. Uh-huh. Right, we're going to end up with some poetry today. Seamus Heaney's writing to me again, oh, in right. spite of my request for him not to do so. Like an eagle in a lofty eyrie, I observe my fellow man. Every Tom, Dick, and Dan. I am far removed from such who lean on the crutch of drug or drink, whilst I survey and intellectually think like the Sphinx I never blink. Crouched on the desert sand, I think, therefore, I am long legs, the desert Tesco, boy. Tesco's. Sometimes, whilst resting in my four poster under a roaster of the Book of Kells duvet, My eyes go proudly to my body of work. My books sit like rooks in terraced rows in my bookcase, all for show. Look on my works and despair, I cry out triumphantly, like Clint Eastwood speaking to an empty chair. I pull out my hanky, blow my nose, and think I wrote all of those. Hark, hark, so far away, curlew and snipe, greet newborn day. President Clinton, biggest fan, Lovely man, Seamus once, he said to me, my Irish friend from over the sea, I have a weakness, you know. I blushed, hunk my head down low, but no matter what my enemies say, I'm Gregory Campbell. I did not have sex in the biblical way. As you know, I nearly was impeached, I give in. I sometimes reached, Seamus said he, I blame the whiskey for my shenanigans with my Monica Lewinsky. I stood at the oval door saying, go in peace, my son, sin no more. There was a time, oh yes, yes, there was a time when a primrose could halt me in my tracks, bringing on acute and poetic attacks. Now I am jaded, my sense of beauty faded. I've seen it all, the Taj Mahal, the Chinese wall, the bogs of Donegal. I tramp on fresh-faced daisies now, feel no wonder at the wee brown cow. One memory for every ripe, the haunting beauty of the snipe. Look, there she goes! What a hold that wee bird has upon me. I could walk barefoot to Tennessee, conceal myself in a heather gripe for just one look at the bogland snipe. I hear its shrill cries in my sleep. (coughs) (coughs) The snipe. In the nude I softly creep through open my latticed window's pane. The snipe and I exchange looks again. I gaze into the small bird's eye. Never blinking, cunning, sly. No words are spoken, but we understand. Bound together, snipe and man. I remember my grandmother on my mother's knee, lifting me up upon her knee, taking the clay pipe out of her mouth and saying, How's the wee man a day? <laughs> I was rankled and irked to be addressed so. I may have been only two years old, yet in artistic terms, I was older than my grandmother. How would she like it if I taught her how to suck eggs? Could I be a changeling, a fairy child? I am the special one, he chosen. I was born not to play or fritter away my genius. When Granny began to tickle me, I leapt from her knee and crawled away from the childish play, pulling my sodden nappy behind me. At the age of three, I began to speak using words and phrases quite oblique. My mother shed a bitter tear. My father said, we got a rat, won't he? Eh? Well, there you are. The problems of a child prodigy growing up in rural Ireland. So until we meet again, this is Seamus Heaney saying, keep smiling, and the turf stacked close to the haggard wall. Here's a young girl be appearing live in this programme on Friday morning. Great little singer. I don't know if you can see The changes that have come over me In these last few days been afraid that it might drift away. I've been telling old stories, singing songs. Makes me think about where I've come from. That's the reason why I see so far away today. Let me tell you that I love you, that I think Caledonia, you're calling me 
Oh, that's brilliant. That's uh, Neve McGlinchey. She'd be playing live and singing live in this programme on Friday mornings. Very young girl. Very, very talented. Hugely talented. And uh, I'm going to finish off with a gentleman who appeared live in this programme not so long ago, uh, an Australian singer called Rory Faithfield. And I get a lot of requests for a song that he has recorded called Big Blue Western Sky. So we'll, we'll end off with that today. Do you like this? I think this is great. There's something magic about this song. Sit back and relax and slag it. Back tomorrow at 10.30. Keep her lit. She squinted into the light Those western rays were far too bright Burning on her skin Rub the sleep out of her and turned her back on darker skies Said it's time to let it in I can see you So much better under big blue western skies Walk the path with sunburned feet the solitary shore of glistening sands broken shells a hundred thousand fair the wells something new she could not ignore I can see you
of glistening sands, broken shells, a hundred thousand fairy wells, something 